this is part of um i guess we call it a tour i'm not selling t-shirts but you know uh it's the third day of a, a saint john charlottetown today moncton tomorrow uh bathurst and uh just getting it's it's full days everywhere so meeting you guys and getting a chance to exchange on our favorite topics spending time with management spending time with the employees later this afternoon some foundation work here today also so it's really uh, uh for me it's very ed um, educational like we have now time to go a little bit more deeper in many subjects and talk about the future of the league and where we want to take it and obviously having time the best time for me is that half hour when i walk around and try to connect with fans a little bit and ask him two, three questions, my own little survey and where they are. So that's that's the big thing. And um, yeah, so here we are, uh, halfway point of the season, a bit more than that. Actually, we're about 60% of our games played, 60, 62%. Things are going well. And I will wait for your questions and I will uh, give you my thoughts as I answer your questions. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Moncton. Thank you. Chris Corey here, uh, Rogers TV. Um, they say attendance this year doing pretty good. I think it's up six percent uh, league wide across the board. Six point seven. Six point seven. There you go. Round up to seven. Yeah. The uh, so like I said, a lot of a lot of good things happening with the league. What's sort of been uh, you know some of your thoughts on growing the game here? Your first uh, sort of year in. As well, finish? that's uh, first of all we had some and let's get uh, right into it in terms of this year was a bit special yeah. because we had a singular year last year. And we come out of that year with a rule that's a rule change that is probably significant. So everything I heard to the summer to the naysayers of the fight rule was you'll lose fans and you might have more cheap shots. Um, and basically 60% of the season in, so I think it's like 350 games, so it's getting to be a pretty good sample. Uh, attendance is up 7%. And what's good is that the underlying story in there is that f as of this Tuesday, uh, 15 teams out of 18 have growing attendances. And one of those three teams is down 0.3%. So allow me to call that stable. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the good news, first of all. Yeah. And even if you take out the bigger markets, the ratios are the same versus last year. And I, it should not go on the underline. It should be underlined because one of the... Um, challenges around uh, since COVID, obviously, and you've heard that, so I won't beleaguer that point, but selling tickets, whether you're a comedian, a singer, a hockey team, remains a challenge, you know, getting people off their butts and getting them to, uh, to see a show, any kind of show, is much more challenging than in 2018. So the teams are doing a great work on that. And uh, suspensions are down. So on the business, and even suspension, when you take out, we did an exercise actually this week to if you take out past two years, every suspension that's linked to a fight, so any other boarding, kneeing, cross-checking to the head, all these things that we don't like to see, uh, that's down by about uh, nine games versus last year. So it tends to say that what people were saying on the hockey side, um, first of all, doesn't translate with that rule. And on the business side, we attendance, there's obviously there was no if anything, more in Quebec than in the Maritimes, but overall in our league, sponsorship came back a little bit more. So even on the business side, it seems to turn out that it's, uh, I wouldn't say a good decision or a bad decision. Decision is made first and foremost to kids' protections. Mm -hmm. I call them kids, the student athletes, with the utmost respect. But I do also want to remember sometimes that they're 16 and 17, right? Uh, and 18 and 19. But... Um, it's just, to me, it's, it's sort of a matter of fact. It just shows that we were there. And I often said in the beginning, the players themselves take us there. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's good news in that sense. Yeah. Well, like you said, basically, you know, the big news in the offseason was the, the fighting rule change. But like you said, suspensions are down across the, the league, basically. Don't see a whole lot of cheap shots. And really how that's helped sort of improve the game and evolve it to sort of the fast, exciting game that it's really become here in the queue. Absolutely. I mean, I heard every time I have a chance to talk like this, when you gentlemen give me a chance to talk, is more I like to reach out to the fans also. I think uh, junior is uh, the junior cycle that we, we famously like to call it. Uh, you're not always on the top. 
what you're investing, and I urge the fans to uh, encourage our youth, our players, you know. Don't just come out in huge numbers when you're at the top of the cycle. They need the encouragement. This is not, this is not uh, guys making uh, $20 million a year, you know. They're, they are developing in, 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 into manhood and developing as players. And they need the and deserve the encouragement for everything they do on the schooling side. Um, we were talking to parents um, uh, a month ago in, um, uh, in the QMJHL Cup in Chateauguay. Uh, 250 parents. And we had a slide that, that sort of shows a typical week. These kids deserve our respect. I mean, it's extremely busy. Most, most of them are hugely successful in school. They have to go by, and they have to wear a logo that they, they uh, understand the importance of it at a very young age. So it accelerates that adulthood that they have to go to. So I got a lot of respect for them. Got a lot of respect. You were talking about the typical week. Yeah. Uh, has that surpassed your typical week and expectations coming into the, the role? Uh, first, and you were very proactive uh, with really bringing a lot of attention to the league itself, with, especially with the name change. How important was that for you personally? Yeah, uh, let me start with your first question. You're talking about my yes. expectations of what my weeks would be? Yes. Um, yeah, I would say uh, I would I would say twenty percent more than what I was <laughs> expecting because. Uh, I was in the media business before, uh, news radio, so that's pretty much 20, you know, 24-7. Uh, yeah. uh, football is definitely 24-7, but a shorter season. Uh, so uh, it was more and less games, so more manageable. And commissioner is a different role than president of, of a team. So you literally manage 612 games, <laughs> not, uh, not 68, you know? So, but it's, it's, it's uh, very much fun, uh, very solid group. I think the grounds we have laid right now, and uh, again, what I like to call a singular year like last year, makes the ground fertile for change. And uh, with the ownership group, we're looking at many, many things from the business model to the hockey side. So that's gonna be interesting in the coming years, not not everything next year. Um, name change was important to me, became important very quickly. Um, I was telling the story that uh, my first uh, week, uh, third, probably third week on the job, it's Memorial Cup in Kamloops, so lots of time to discuss with uh, hockey people, and that's when I learned that it was about the, people say 15, 20 years, 10 years, depending who you talk to, long time topic. And uh, when, I came, when I came back to the office, I said, well, let's, let's bring it to an end, the conversation. We go or we don't go. And um, coming from the CFL, where you have a logo that's LCF, right. looking at the NHL, where you have LNH as an official logo, this was just, that, that should have been uh, done, you know? Uh, and to me, it's not uh, because there's six teams in the Maritimes or because uh, lots of great players came out of the Maritimes. It's 20% of our fans. And uh, if the NHL does an English logo, a, a, a French logo in that case, for, I don't know, 8 million fans out of, I don't know, two, 200 million or whatever, 300 million, the two countries together, and the CFL does a French logo for 9 million, for 8 million French uh, fans, out of 38, which is not even 20 percent, uh, we should have done that. You know, we should we should do it. After the logo, you sort of say, okay, now how do we recognize the league? And then the some other names were thrown about. It was important to preserve the Q yeah. to me, the letter Q. And then, so funny that major starts with an M. And uh, I said it's probably going to be the cheapest rebrand I've ever done. <laughs> And uh, the QMJHL became the QMJHL. Yeah. And that's why to us it was more a natural evolution. And uh, I was actually, it's funny, there's the BMW logo because I was giving examples. Because so in the Maritimes it was well received, obviously. Yes. In Quebec there was a little bit of 60-40. But more journalists were, some journalists were upset versus the people. And I said, what does IBM mean? 
and people draw a blank because the brand is IBM. BMW is the brand. That's, how, that's obviously German, but nobody ever asks. Nobody cares what it means. It has nothing to do with cars, I'm told. It has, used to be an airplane company. So what we want to, you know, it should be QMJHL, and that's the brand. The letters are there, and that's what we should use. Last one, the, no the negativity. Uh, obviously, you just mentioned it yourself, some journalists. How, how do you approach negativity with regards to the league? And, and then, obviously, the top prospects game, it's coming here to Moncton. Yeah. Uh, you know, some, a prominent journalist called the, the crop of NHL uh, 2024 uh, crop out of the league terrible. Mm. How do you approach the negativity? Well, overall, first of all, I always try to see who from, from who does it come from. When it comes from someone who follows our league, knows our league, I will pay attention. Obviously, uh, some people will say I have a bias because that's where I come from. I used to be on that side of the table for a long time. So, and I know that, like in any job, 90% of the people are rigorous, do a good job, and do a fair evaluation. So when it comes from someone who follows our league, you sort of pay attention. Usually, though, our GMs and our coaches, with all due respect, guys, are a little bit ahead of you <laughs> in terms of talent evaluation because that's what they do all the time. So it doesn't come necessarily as a surprise. If anything comes as a surprise to me, it's because I haven't done my job or somebody around us haven't really digged. So I approach it that way, first of all, when it, when it makes sense and it's fair. And sometimes we have to recognize it, so much recognize it, that when you talk about uh, the challenges right now we have in the NHL draft or uh, la cuvée, how would I say that in English? It's like, uh, you know, a crop. It's actually a crop. Yeah, that's right. So if it's not our best crop, and last year we have to recognize uh, was the worst year as far as the NHL traffic is, is concerned. So we're actually tonight I'm looking forward. I want, I'm uh, sitting hopefully at one of the um, events we have is what the president of Hockey New Brunswick that is here that I'll get to meet for the first time. And obviously we have discussions with Justine Thibault at Hockey Quebec. And uh, everybody recognizes that in Canada, we have to do a better job with our uh, U16. And because uh, that's when we grab them. So we don't have any too much impact. So I've promised just and I'm going to promise tonight, Hockey New Brunswick, anything our league can do in order to, to improve, build that up, looking at every solution so they get to us better. And then I could put even more pressure on guys like Richie, uh, Thibault, and say, okay, guys, now we're getting good. How do we make him even greater? And it's fun to bring someone who's already good to make him great versus, uh, you know, a pool of the, right now there's a different pool. And, and it's been 13 years in a row, I believe, where it's, it's you know, hockey in, inscriptions, subscribing to hockey, playing hockey, were, was down. It turned around four years ago. So now we're a little bit in that cycle, and we have to work our butts off to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, maybe just your general comments on uh, the goal behind your tour of the Maritimes or the league as it is, and uh, specifically on what's your impression on Moncton organization as a follow-up? Well, n no specific goals really other than what I stated at the top. Really... Um, uh, you guys heard that expression uh, before, but uh, I have two ears and one mouth, so I like to listen twice as much as I talk. So really understanding the issues, sometimes challenges, uh, preoccupations of the team in their market, so to be on the same wavelength. The first six months have been, you know, 100 miles an hour. Uh, you know, name change and, and managing was a lot of politics the first three, four months, getting to know everybody. So now it's really about uh, sort of getting down to business and preparing next year's and next year's with an S, like the future. Uh, because some things we may not be able to do in three years, but we may want to start now because the longer it takes, the sooner we should start. So. So that's sort of the main, main, main goal. And obviously, and don't underestimate that, I'm very serious when I say that, the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fans, parents, billet family that I can meet and ask direct questions and get their, and thank them, first of all, for their involvement. But last night in Charlottetown, was, was I, I got to meet uh, a family that came from 
uh, their son plays, they're from Ottawa, their son plays, so I mean, they were actually in town, and so we got a long chat, I met Billet families, that to me is important. Uh, well, Moncton, what can I say about Moncton that you don't know? I mean, I was here in July and I was asked the same question, it's just first class organization all the way, there's no surprise there, ownership uh, unmatched in terms of really at the top of our league, in terms of dedication and, and taking care of our student athletes uh, on all fronts. So there's no, certainly here, it's much fun to hear about building because there's not, no major issues, let's put it that way. It's way different in this market than some of them are more challenging. Uh, Chris Corrigan, Rogers TV. Yep. Uh, you talked earlier about the sort of the player's schedule and sort of how jam packed it is, right? Game day for the Wildcats tonight, they got a game tonight. There's a Timbit tournament going on. They're out on yes. the ice with the kids, right? So maybe tell us a little bit how rewarding it is for you to see these student athletes, these young players, really giving back to the community, taking care of homework, competing at a high level on the ice, and, and it's amazing. Care of business. It's amazing to me. Uh, it's a, I take some of the. I don't want us to. to uh, you know, sometimes a cliche becomes a cliche because it's true. So it's not because we say that we prepare. We take him at 16 as kids and they leave at 20 as adults productive society to be productive that's those what you just described the timbits charlottetown today is spending a day with uh, i was i was joking with richie they call them u5s i i hope there's no triple a u5s because it's way too early but so and you know, you give a you give a puck to a child, you, you give him a jersey, and his eyes lit up. See, in in those the Wildcats in this are the idols in a way, and it's it's um, you need to learn that people look at you that way. I'm sure that players would tell will tell Richie and the coach that uh, from how they view that event at 16 and how they view it at 19 has probably changed 100 percent because they realize. So to me, those, and those are just fun. I mean, they're just fun. And nothing is more fun to see a five, six, seven-year-old, uh, you know, skating across and then hitting the boards because he cannot stop yet. I mean, those are the things that uh, just make our game, we cannot forget how important that is, I think. With the, uh, the draft, upcoming yeah. uh it's a long way away but just the importance of the league and in-person draft uh after covid and, and obviously coming to to moncton how important is that uh to continue the uh, the tradition of uh the uh, qmjhl draft it's it's first of all it's really i think we can use the expression marquee event uh uh, again, talking about uh, eyes opener, I mean, when I have the, l the huge chance of welcoming uh, Caleb yes. last year as Moncton had the first pick, uh, Denoyer to the stage, uh, I mean, I can just imagine, we all probably, as young kids, we all probably wanted to live that moment and they get to live it. Not all of them are going to go in the big show. So that's their moment. For a lot of them, that's their moment. Um, so for us, it's important. Um, it's one of those things that's it's, it's a very important investment uh, in what we do and how we do that also. It's rewarding for the parents. It's rewarding for the family as a whole that everybody, uh, to me last year in Sherbrooke, for instance, the, what I remember the most is when you get to pick 252 and you call the name and you still hear people clapping. That's, that's why we do it at the end of the day. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's an important event in uh, the things we do for the players and for uh, the image of the league. And another important event, obviously, the Memorial Cup coming back to uh, the QMJHL. Maybe just touch on the impact that that uh, event has and, and the legacy that the league wants to continue. Well, uh, Rimouski laid a great plan this year. It was a hot competition this year. And for us, first of all, and I'll start with the boring stuff, um, it's about $80 million of e uh, economic fallouts. So we need to remember that because that's, that's part of what we're building here. And to your point, of, you use the word legacy. Uh, every event, there's 
whether it's infrastructure, whether it's a symbol of some, some sort, uh, there's a huge legacy that the Memorial Cup was there and creates such a, a fun 10 days. Um, you know, sports at the end of the day, what we like to say, when things are tough, people will assemble around their sport, favorite sports team and that's the three hours, six hours a week that you get away from sometimes uh, when times are tougher. Uh, and that's what sports does best, unites people and creates a party and it's an event and it's, uh, it's festive and that's what I think Rimouski will do a great job doing that. And then hopefully we need to build on it. We need to make sure that now I think post-COVID that's where everybody is. We don't want to satisfy ourselves uh, with the results we have now when we, either from competition point of view or financial results point of view. If there's a way to improve, I'm always ready to listen on how we do this better. And uh, so, yeah, so it's going to be, I hope we keep building on it and building on it and make it a, a bigger, a bigger, a bigger event all the time.